Not of yours. He never stops, does he? Make it. Then give my wine gums to my sweetheart. <laughs> okay, man. You. Okay. Oh, go, go, go. 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 And she's not laughing. No. Just entertaining the lads. Mm. I'll entertain you in a minute. You can't play cowboys and Indians all your life. Can't I? Oh, home. No, you'll be late for your dance class. See you, lads. Bye, Larry. <laughs> So let's add a tiddly at the milk bar and do the good old cow. Ladies and gentlemen, you loved them last time. Well, I'm sure you'll love them this time. Give a big beast of welcome to Carson and Kid. <laughs> this. <laughs> ah. Do you want to buy me an air gun? Why would I want to buy you an air gun? Because I'll laugh at your jokes. Very good, but no. You're going to have to save up from your pocket money. I don't get pocket money. Well, when you do, you can save up from it. I've got a better idea. I give up dance classes, and the money we save buys me an air gun. Hey, what do you reckon? I'll see you, all right. What the bloody flip are you playing at? It's ten past. Why don't you keep an eye on the time? If you get oil on that shirt... We're doing up his bike. It's going to be bespoke. <laughs> yeah, bespoke. I'll bespoke you if you don't get moving. You're not even ready. Dad says I can give up dance classes. Well, yeah, oh, Dad's talking scribble, then. He says, with the money we save, he'll buy me an air gun. Didn't you? Well, I, I didn't say it was a done deal, exactly. Speak up on Eric. And you, stop filling his head with daft ideas. He's got enough of his own. Bike will still be here when you get back, eh? Air gun. What's an air gun going to get you? Will you get a ruddy move on? Could have got changed when I got there. Nobody's looking at you. I don't know where you get that daft idea from. Got me own plans, you know. This better not be a joke. 
15, I'll get a pick round. And at 17, I'll learn to read it. Oh, very funny. Very cute. Write it down. Use it after your bud Flanagan. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Blame <me> neck. <laughs> I'm not all that. There's something missing. More gormless. Shoulders. No, more gormless. What does your dad look like when he's checking his coupon? Skip I one, two, skip. Ah! Ah! Tiddle at the milk bar, my little pal, Sheikh of Araby. I think we should open with Sheikh of Araby, then the white horse gag, get him on our side, then make him cry. Fair enough. Sentimental um, number for the big finish. Not a dry eye in the house, guarantee. Of course, it works especially for me in blackface for it, but you get the idea. Don't bother, Ronnie. I've seen it up. Now, I need an act for tonight. Ernie, I can use. But not you, Mr. Wiseman. But we're Carson and Kid. Well, it's Kid I want. Look, you can stay on and do a few bits and pieces while the lad's there, so he's not on his own, but as long as we're clear about one thing, it's Ernie as a solo act. Take it or leave it. Next! We can go straight home and do the clubs. We were doing all right. Let's just get the train home. I don't have to play the West End. Of course you have to play it. Chance of a lifetime. You're not saying that, though. I can't stay something. Let's get you to the hotel. You understand, don't you? Your mum's got her hands full. Come on. You can't survive on bits and pieces. Bloody hell. What would your brothers and sisters make of this, eh? What about that? Talk about living? Grand, yes. <clears throat> And think on. Don't trust any bugger, ever. Get your scent to your scent. Work hard, never let up. Don't fall for girls. Keep your bank book close to your heart. Of course. You do what Mr. Hilton tells you, all right? Yes, Dad. Oh dear. All right. You hear me? Good lad. Ernie. Ernie. 
in there, this lad? No. You are funnier it looks. Never mind, son. I'm going to lose next time. I heard that. <laughs> Guess what first prize was? Well, by the look on your face, I take it it wasn't tea with Miss Blackpool. An audition. Another audition? Not just another audition. Gets to audition for Jack Hilton. Oh, Jack Hilton. The Jack Hilton. Oh, well, I'll be. Who's Jack Hilton? <laughs> 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 The reason you are all here is because you've got talent. You've proved that by winning your regionals. But I'm here to tell you that talent counts for nothing without hard work, application, and nerve. But don't just take my word for it. Oh, no. There's a young man come here today, just like you a few years back, young man. Yes. He auditioned for me in the afternoon, and I put him on stage at the London Palladium with Arthur Askey that very night. Let me please introduce to you the current star of Youth Takes a Bow, Britain's Mickey Rooney, Ernie Wise! <laughs> Why can't I wear something like that? It's not funny. It is with him, innit? Boys and girls, welcome. You know, when I first appeared at the Palladium, they called me the Jack Buchanan of tomorrow. And who knows? Perhaps one of you out there right now will one day be written up as the Ernie Wives of tomorrow. Oh, the Jack Buchanan of a week last Tuesday. Isn't he confident? That's one word for it. Next. I guess my way do not up. I'm not doing it. Eric Come this far. Hmm? Of course you're bloody doing it. You could be like Ernie Wise. I don't want to be like Ernie Wise. Big head, short legs, full of himself. Eric you've got one. You. you give it up. You've got. If you do, I'll buy you that air gun. How about that? Right, Adolf. This'll put a goose in your step. Prepared to see. The finest display of gunmanship since Nelson shot Napoleon in the Dardanelles. <laughs> I'm guarding the home of the home guard, guarding the home guard's home. Hey, Rick! Oh. Hey, Rick! Have I been called up? Yes. Oh, they know a sniper when they see one. They picked you. You're in Youth Tech's bow. Oh, Flaming egg. 
Your favourite. And before you say anything, George, I know tin salmon's not an everyday thing, but it's not every day, is it? And, oi, vanilla slice for afters. One each. Bloody hell, she landed London Palladium. Well, only a matter of time, according to Mr Hilton. Six months on the road, who knows where it might lead? How do you mean on the road? You never mentioned that. Well, we're not coming back every night for touring the country, will we? Daft Aper. Oh, no. I suppose not now you mention it. Touring the country? When will I see my mates? You'll make new mates. Variety mates. Mates with a bit of something about them. Don't want variety mates. I've got a gang here. And an air gun. Eric, do you want to be tied to a whistle or you laugh like your dad? Well, Eric, so... listen to me. You make people laugh. You're a lovely dancer and you can hold a tune. But more than that, and I mean this as the mother who carried you and nursed you and raised you, you aren't any good at anything else. You told me it was the teachers that were at fault. Oh, you were bottom of the class at everything except fooling around. So if, if fooling around is what you are good at, then why not do it for a living then, eh? No answer to that. What's your name again, Sonny? Eric Bartholomew. He's a bit nervous, first day and all that. But you were just the same, weren't you? No, not really. You see, it was different for me. I went straight on in the West End. Arthur said it was as though I'd been doing it for years. You should get some new material. Arthur Askey, he's a lovely fella. Hey, I'll introduce you when he comes down. Good luck, Sonny. Thank you, thank you. Arthur Tulcher. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to go easy on this next youngster because it's his first time on a professional stage. Smash his face in. You do no such thing. A warm welcome for the big baby, Eric Bartholomew. Eric, Eric. Go. Right. I'll give you a big baby. What are you doing? No, I'm with a Mrs. Waite. She's kept me the first floor front. Oh. Where's your mother? She's at home in Leeds. Oh, have you not got a chaperone? Why would I need a chaperone? Cheerio. Did you hear that? Yeah, even his own mother's put up with him. Yes? Ernie Wise. I'm booked in for two nights. Ernie who? Wise. I'm the headline in Youth Takes a Bow. Mr Hilton has made my arrangements. Well, not with me, he hasn't. Try Mrs Last's on Cross Street, love. But... I said I'd enjoy show business. Yeah. Well, I'm not. <laughs> ah. Ah. Oh. oh, that were very close. All all right in here? Yes. What about everybody else? Everybody's fine. It'll be bad news for somebody. Got didn't hit the theatre. Oh. If that's it, lad, tell him he missed. Come on. Come on. All right, I'm coming. We're fit to burst in here. Come in a minute. 
I'll get a pencil and paper and I'll write you some addresses down. Is that Ernie? Is that our Ernie? Uh, hello, Mrs. Bath, I'll let me in. What are you doing wandering around in the blackout? You're not courting, are you? <laughs> You know, mix up with the digs. I, I'm just sorting something out, you know, temporarily. Like having you wandering the streets at this hour, you can share with us. What happened to your first floor front then? Eh? Did it not pass muster? My digs got bombed. Ah, expecting you were they? Come on, Jeffalas. You and me will have to top and tail. What? I'm not sharing with you. Good, I was hoping you'd say that. You and Ernie can talk and tail. <clears throat> You're keeping your socks on, aren't yes. you? Yes, yeah. When did you last change them? February. You've got all the blankets. Well, I'm top of the bill. Oh, Eric. See you tomorrow. No, hang on, Eric. I'm bunking up with you again. Oh, no, sunshine. I arranged it with your mum. Oh, you don't want to ask me about it, then? Hey, you have a sulking. We'll all save a few, Bob, and you might learn some manners. Oh, allow me. Oh, thank you, Ernie. Go on. How much have you saved so far? Six per take, man. <laughs> Jelly baby. Thank you. Don't take the boy. Perhaps he's not all there. What? Your song, I'm not all there. I mean, that's what it's about, isn't it? You watch it's a missing. It's a double meaning. <laughs> what? No. It's a simpleton routine, isn't it, Mum? I was going to tell you when you were 21. I can't believe it. Good night, boys. All right, who's this? Yeah. I thought I told you to just drink half the soda. I did, but my half was at the bottom. <laughs> Anyway, hey. <laughs> all right, get out of that. A <laughs> pair of you. It's like being trapped with the crazy gang. I see yours is more of a Wilson Kipple and Betty. I think you'll find there are three of them. Are there? <laughs> now there's novelty. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Write that down. Hey? That was a good gag. You can work up a double act. Cross talk, solo from Ernie, soft shoot to finish. Let Ernie do it. He's got better handwriting. I miss this. Me too. You can see it every day. There isn't a better view in the world. I thought you meant holding hands. No, I did, daft beggar. Sorry we're away so much. Get away with you. It's not too much for you, being on your Todd all the time. Who says I'm on my Todd? Ada Bailey makes a very acceptable egg custard. <laughs> she had ringworm right through school, just thought you should know that. Give us a cuddle. Well, you're supposed to be a businessman. A businessman doesn't walk like that. You don't know my business. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Those two ever stop? <laughs> Not really. Sometimes wonder what I've started.
What's this? What's what? What's that? A Greek can. What's a Greek can? About 30 bob a week. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Can, can you lend me two pounds, please? Thank you. No, it's all right. We'll do. Now, you owe me one. I don't understand. Lend me two pounds. No, it's all right. We'll do. Now, you owe me one. I don't understand. It's not sharp enough. Do it again faster. All right, lend me two pounds. No, no, it's all right. One will do. Now you owe me one. I don't understand. Let me two pounds. No, it's all right. One will do. Now you owe me one. I don't understand. Well, I'll show you. Ask me for two pounds. Let me two pounds. There's two pounds. How much have you asked for? Two pounds. How much have I given you? Two pounds. Now you owe me two. <laughs> now we're all square. <laughs> what are you crying for? You just conned me out of two pounds. It's me father. He died this morning. Oh, well, that's terrible. How did it happen? He was on the roof of a paint factory. He slipped. He fell through. He drowned in a tank of varnish. Well, that's a horrible way to go. On the contrary, everyone said he had a beautiful finish. <laughs> Very sharp last night, lads. Very sharp. Mm. Sharp enough to give us a rise. Sharp enough for you to strike out on your own. What? You're not sacking us, are you? You can't sack them. Hey, nobody's sacking anybody. Thank goodness for that. I'm letting you go. The show is called Youth Takes a Bow. So what? They're 18 years old. It's more like grown men taking liberties. It... The audience wants plucky little boys and girls. They want cute. You're a lot of things, boys, but cute ain't one of them. Besides, king and country will be knocking any minute. I'm sorry, lads. No hard feelings. Ernie, uh, can I have a word? Shall we wait for you, Ernie? You run along, Mrs. B. It's like Morecambe Illuminations, mm. only bigger. <laughs> Ta-da! Mm. Like a brew, I can still see the kettle. It'll be a green one. It's always a green one. Does anybody actually like Sprout? Shut up and we'll keep peeling. Why, the folks send Christmas cards so late. You get Dorothy Gander every year. Sounds like a big turkey. <laughs> well, 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 look who it is. That rules the Salvation Army out. Look who the wind's blowing in. Father Christmas must be close. One of his little helpers is here already. Oh, well, at least say hello before your routine. What a lovely surprise. It is if you like sprouts. It's a bit crowded at ours, as it turned out. Well, there's always room for you here, Ernie. Oh, yes, there's always room for Lily White. Expect I'll be sleeping in the coal bunker. Earn, you're missing your best mate, Arthur Askey's on. Good evening, girl. I'll get these done first. Yeah, good lad, Ernie. Well, that's the least I can do. Why is that, then? Well, you're giving me Christmas and everything. Well, what else would it be? I don't know. You might be feeling bad about planning to go solo. What makes you think that? Because if I was Jack Hilton, I might have advised you to give Eric the push and go solo. How did you know? He told Eric to do the same. What did Eric say? He said you were partners and you'd stick together thick and thin. There's nothing more to say. <laughs> Why? What did you say? Well, it's, it's difficult to know what to think. Jack Hilton knows what he's talking about. There's no one bigger. You don't need Jack Hilton. You need Eric. You stay with Jack Hilton, you'd be little Ernie Wise all your life. But you and Eric, you belong together. You're both good solo acts, very good. But you're a great double act. 
And do you know why? I have a feeling you're about to tell me. Because you have a great feel for the material. You know what works as a pair. You just do. You just need to trust your instincts. <laughs> I knew you were too bright to disagree with me. Do you need a hand? Oh, and now he asks, now the job's done. Come on, it's cracker time! Oh, I love a cracker. How the jokes and mottos? I hope it's jokes. We, we need, need the, the material. material. <laughs> <laughs> Nightingale. Once more. On Christmas Day, I speak to millions of you scattered Far Ta -da! across hmm. the world. Don't feel the same and Christmas without Eric and Ernie, does it? Still, I'll be back on Civvy Street soon enough. Mm, jobless on Civvy Street if I can't find them something. Southampton Hippodrome looking for axe? Oh, no double axe, no vents. Could we not treat ourselves to a new advent calendar next year? I made a money. <sighs> Swansea Empire. Looking for dancing girls. Well, Ernie's got the legs for it. Mm. You know what I think is holding them back? The war. Eric's name. Bartholomew and Wise. Sounds like a firm of solicitors. Mm, his name. Got it. That's what he should call himself. Eric Visitor. Hiding in church with cigar box until the war was over. Hello, Mrs. B. <laughs> you ready to start work again? I think I already have. Good. <laughs> I've got the pair of you job. A, a job? Is it number three circuit? Not quite number three. It's not pie and peas, is it? No, it's better than pie and peas. Well, it's a job. I know it's not up to our usual standards. I didn't know I had standards till I got here. fish with an apple, you catch a fish with a worm. It's all right. The worm's in the apple. <sighs> Stop playing with your woggles, son. It's not nice. You, you can't talk to a wolf cub like that. But his own god. I'm only thinking of his gingang gooly. <laughs> Did I say something funny? Very nearly. Come on. Oh, you're off, then. We'll carry on, though. Needed sustenance. Thank you, Ernie. Homemade. Oh, I see. Bit of courting in your spare time. Nothing as irresistible as a small fellow with cake. Come on, cheer up. Happen things will pick up after the advertising campaign. What advertising campaign? Fine. <laughs> I'm not laughing. Victoria Theatre Henley. I've already got Jewel and Morris. Have you found an ad yet for a couple of comics to close down a show? Oh, that wasn't your fault. Circus mixed with variety was never gonna work. Because they're both dying, haven't port stock port. It's a panther with Al Reed's too similar. I'm gonna get Dad to put in a word with the council. 
Oh, are you? Bournemouth Winter Gardens. What makes you think your dad wants to do that for you? Manager's a lunatic, you never get paid when you do it in washes. You wouldn't mind, would you, Dad? Paint and festival well, theatre. They want animal acts. Don't know, there's two sides to everything, isn't there? It'd kill you. It'd kill you, you mean? Mum's right, Eric, you won't be happy in Morecambe. How do you know? Just cos you were born tap dancing like a clockwork mouse. The pair of you are brilliant, but you won't get noticed up here. You need to be in London. Do you think we should go to London? Ooh. You know me, I don't go much on thinking. Well, if you did, what would you say? Thing is... Thing is... I think you should listen to your mum and Ernie and wear the whole thing up. Don't you mind being on your own all the time? Eric seems to be under the impression that you're going down to London with them. Well, somebody's got to pay the rent. I'll get more skivvying down there than up here. All right. You don't mind too much, do you? No, of course I don't mind. Just not forever, just till they get set up right. I don't mind. What? What is it? Sometimes I think it might be nice if you did. All right. I do mind. I'm begging you not to go. Now, will that stop you? No, not really. Oh, there you are, then. There you are. Spit it out, lad. You wouldn't listen? You're a performer. A born performer. It isn't about performing. It's about Dad. What about Dad? I think you take advantage. I think he's dead easy going and you take advantage. Oh, do you? Well, it's a bit more complicated than that. Well, how? I thought you knew about double acts. What? It's just a bit more complicated. Let's leave it at that, shall we? Next! Name? Uh, more and wise. Have 
nice light. Five of spades. We're on. Hello, music lovers. Feel free to applaud one handed, gentlemen. If you don't laugh, then we might be forced to take our clothes off. Then you'd laugh, believe me. <laughs> Was that a laugh? Uh, I don't know. I've forgotten what they sound like. Strike it up, fellas. By the light, not the dark, but the light of the silvery moon. Not the sun, but the moon. What was that? I want a spoon. Pardon? To my honey, I'll croon love's tune. Honeymoon. He's going on a honeymoon. Keep a shining in June. January, February, March, forget it. Your silvery beams will bring love's dreams. We'll be cuddling soon. Oh, me, you want? By the silvery moon. Not the dark, but the light of the silvery moon. Not the sun, but the moon. I want a spoon. He's going to spoon somebody. To my honey, I'll croon love's tune. Honeymoon. What are you doing? Having a little dance. This is my solo. What was that? The belly bit. Oh, right. Honeymoon. <sighs> Honeymoon. It's got each Keep the shining in June. Very good. Your silvery beams will bring love's dreams. We'll be coddling soon. What are you doing? By the silvery moon, by the silvery moon, by the silvery moon, by the silvery moon. Hey! <laughs> the girls don't come out this way. No, no, no. It's you. You I wanted to see. Oh, that's a worry. <laughs> Gordon Aval. Theatrical agent. Huh? I can make sure you never play dumps like this again. Keep them closed. I don't like surprises. Hey, come on, that's no way to talk about your only child. You can open them now. I'm ex. What the ex this in here done? I found her in his wallet and managed to open it with a crowbar. We've landed a tour. <laughs> Number two circuit. Twenty-five pound a week. Twenty-five pounds a week? When do we start? We didn't mean you. We meant us. You've done your bit, Mrs. B. Yes. We've got a proper manager now, Mum. You can go home, put your feet up. And here's your ticket, Ernie. Give the lady a ticket. First class. First class. Watch that you tip the stage doorkeeper. He'll see your laundry gets done. Now I'm not there to do it. Always trust your own material. You know better than any other beggar what works and what doesn't. Now, you take care of him. And you, you take care of him. Okay. Don't let him get his hands on the money. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Say hello to Dad for me. And thanks, Mum. Thanks for everything you've done. Yes, well, don't forget to work hard. Take a leaf out of Ernie's book. Push, push, push. Don't go all sentimental on me, Mum. Hey? You're never too big to clout, even if I do need a ladder to reach you. Hang on. 
bit of breakfast on your chin. People are looking. Yeah, well, people always will look. You've got that kind of a face. Yes. Bye, Mum. I'll say hello to Dad for you. Welcome and wise. You're on the top floor. Don't piss in the sink. I remember my wedding day like it was yesterday. Oh, do you? You know what an awful day yesterday was. <laughs> it was a very emotional day, was it? Even the wedding cake was in tears. Welcome and wise. Ninepence deposit for the plug. You get it back at the end of the week. Ernie? Come on, Eric. Put down your urn. You're short and I don't like your hair. <laughs> you know what I meant. Oh, the urn. Yes. You meant the urn. Why didn't you say that? I'll put it down, then. Put it down. Welcome and wise. Ernie, show the gentleman our plug. One and three, if you break it. Pay him now, Ernie. We might have a party. He can't see the John, you know. Pretty good. He's got a lovely wife as well. Can you see a policeman? Right here? No? OK. Stick him down. <laughs> well, surely you mean stick him up. Oh, don't confuse me. I'm nervous enough as it is. Just give me a watch. Well, what do you want that for? Look, it's worthless. Its only value is sentimental. Well, give it to me anyway. I feel like I could cry. <laughs> I'd be Kippodrome. Of the acoustics there. Tell me about her brother. He lived with me, and I told him you can treat my house as if it were your own. And did he? Yes, he sold it this morning. But where did you meet her? Who? Your wife. Oh, the wife. At a dance. She was the prettiest thing on the ballroom floor. I can see her now, lying there. <laughs> Tell me about your father. He's a very shy man, my father, very shy indeed. Is he? Oh, yes. In fact, if he hadn't been so shy, I'd be two years older. Ooh. Hey, this is all right, isn't it? It's no more than we deserve. <laughs> oh, look, it's an orphan. The world and his harmonica. Second on the bill, eh? Lock out. Hey! Stage doors are in the back. We're Morecambe and Wise. English comedians. Morecambe and Wise. Stars of radio. We sing, we dance. Can you duck? What should we do today? Yes, yeah. oh! Let's toss a coin. Uh, heads will go to the dog racing, tails will go to the football. Go on, then! <laughs> Come on, go! You know, Eric, you should get away from it all. Go somewhere exciting. Spain! Spain? No beer, you bleeding beer! You'd make a fantastic bullfighter. You make a bloody terrible comedian! <laughs> Tonight. They're just toying with you tonight, lads. Oh. 
What if we start with a slap? A bit of violence might win them over. What do you think? I think I'm in love. Joan Bartlett, no chance. Former Miss Margate, future Mrs. Morgan. They've asked us to do an extra five minutes. Oh, that's good. They must like you. Well, not really. Daz O'Connor fainted on stage. Best he's ever gone down. It's left a gap in the bill. Whew. It's not going to be easy. It's only ten years to get ten minutes. Well, that's what I said. What sort of song? Yeah. If we sing it too slow, we give them a chance to heckle. Ask them to join in on the song. That, that way they can't heckle. Hey, that's a good idea. What sort of song? What was that thing? Do you remember when Eric was doing that thing? What's that? Uh, what do you think, Eric? Well, Eric, what are you doing? Eric, what are that's a coincidence. <laughs> I'm Joan. Do you like time wasters, John? Not really. Good. Will you do me the honour of marrying me? I don't know you. Well, that's probably for the best. <laughs> Are you going to say yes? I've got a better reply. Oh, I see. Fat chance. <laughs> oh. What did I tell you? Not a hope. So what are we doing? A song. Can't you ever pay attention? Oh, a song. Good idea. What song is that then? Poor Arthur. He must have tripped over Des O'Connor. fellas. Gentlemen. Keep going before they remember they hate us. In fact, it's so important, I'm going to ask the ladies and gentlemen to help you. Oh, one, two, three. <laughs> That's the Woody Woodpecker song. I'm starting to like you. Expecting you, was that? Hiya, Mum. This is Joan, my fiance. You better come in. I'm just gonna go get some cigarettes. You don't smoke? Yes, he does. There you are. That's two new things you found out already.
How long have you been courting? Six months. I was dancing up at Glasgow Empire. A dancer. Oh. So. I see. So. Are you in the family way? No. Well, you're not marrying him for his looks, and he's hopeless with money, you know. I'm marrying him because he's as daft as a brush. Who's going to be in charge of the money, you or him? And don't say him because you'll be in the poorhouse by the end of the month. He wants me to handle the money. Not that he'll ever make any. Well, they've got the summer season. Summer season? Where? Blackpool. Didn't Eric mention it? No. No, he didn't. And if uh, Ernie's plans for television pay off, you never know. I might have to have two purses. Yes. You might. Did she pass? Never mind all that. How come I'm the last to know that television's been sniffing around? Steps up to the front door. Oh, don't do yourself a mischief with the electrics. I'll try not to. It's the right size, isn't it? Perhaps we need an even bigger set with them being a double act. Oh, very funny. Be giving you your own series next. Yeah. What are you doing? Nobody's died. You don't get the benefit unless the lights are down. It's being given out is bad for your eyes. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Do you think this is it? <laughs> Look at us, eh? Look at us at BBC television. We've come a long way. You've come a lot further with only having little legs. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie. Eric. <laughs> Eric and Ernie. Pleased to meet you again. Mr. Waldman. Call me Ronnie. If you like. We've had Tom Vesti writing for you. He writes for Monkhouse and done a bit for Jewel and Warris. Uh, we don't need writers. We have our own material. Right here. I love your line act. But what you need to know is the BBC is funded by the public. So there are one or two guidelines on what is and isn't acceptable. No jokes about effeminacy. No references to honeymoon couples and ladies' underwear. No innuendo. Hmm? Let's have a look. Or allusions to animal habits. Oh. And marital infidelity. Mm. Ah. What writers have you got? This is Nigel. Meet Eric. And Ernie. And Eric. When I'm not Ernie. Nigel's a rising star here at the BBC. Problem number one, you're northern. Northern comedy just doesn't play on television. What if we stood on the south side of the stage? Do you think that might help? <laughs> I'll leave you chaps to it. Call me if you need anything. Right, shall we have a read? Well, we can, but shouldn't we be getting along with the rehearsal? <laughs> OK, I'll be Gloria. I can't touch you for it. No? Let's crack on, shall we? The scene is Transylvania. A small bar with a barmaid. Are you doing it now? Is that you doing it? <laughs> small bar with a barmaid. What do you think of Nigel? Well, let's just say it's a good job he's not paid to be funny. Well, he must know his stuff. Otherwise, he wouldn't be working in the BBC, would he? Yeah, he's confident enough. The material, what do you think? Well, it's all right. Not really us, though, is it? You've hit the nail right on the head there. Do you think we should say something? Can't do any harm, can it? Eric and I were talking over lunch, and we feel we've moved away from material like this. 
We talk to each other on stage more, not just gags and wordplay. That's another concern, actually, Ernie, you talking to the audience about Eric. Well, that's our act. That's how it works. Yes, well, on television, it will come across as, well, smug. Not what we want at all. But that's what gets the laughs, isn't it, Eric? On stage it does, yes. I'm telling you now, it won't work on television. Well, it worked pretty well on the radio, didn't it, Eric? Let's see how it goes this afternoon, shall we? So, big night for you tonight, Mrs. Bartholomew. Well, we've done very well, yes. A lovely piece of filly I'd look put aside if you're interested. Just the shrimps, thank you. We're not letting it go to our heads. No idea we don't do the chairs. Under the rug, are they? George, your son is going to be on the television. Try and rise to the occasion. <clears throat> so, you'll make your entrances here. For the Transylvania sketch, the bar will be staged right. Where will the cameras be, like tonight? The cameras will be where they are now. What, between us and the audience? Will they be able to see us properly? Can we get a milk crate in for Ernie? They'll be able to see you on the monitors which are in front of the stage. Gentlemen, gentlemen, trust me, it works. Now, come on, let's crack on. Lots of work to do. Hello. We're not too late, are we? No, Edna, there's no yet. Oh, no. good. Come on, Vernon. At least we'll get a good seat, eh? Here we are. So? Oh. We're not the first, then. Shape yourself, George. Get it switched on. Let the valves warm up. Looking forward to this. Look at the size of that. And what a lovely spread. Woman's realm. Home entertaining without the strain. Here at the Shepherd's Bush Empire, we have three cameras for transmission. George, any clearer would be there. TV dinner, they call this in America. Well, dinner, at any rate. Who moved? Somebody moved. <laughs> <laughs> True story, that. <laughs> you can ask any of them. Yeah, they're all brothers. Any a laughter? Huh? That's a good sign. Billy Crackers. Hey, Best warm up man in the business. <laughs> Now, you, madam, on the fourth row. This camera here is going to be close up on you as the titles roll, so try and look excited. <laughs> oh, bet you wish you put your teeth in now, don't you, missus? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, keep your mouth shut. Uh, for the forecast, then, to the north, it's going to be rather longer before any really uh, good weather begins to come through. Oh. The uh, depression center moving across there will, will spread an almost completely cloudy belt right across the country. When I do this, I want you to laugh. <laughs> I want to do this, I want you to really laugh. I want to do this. It means the onion in my cheese sandwich is repeating on me. <laughs> This material's better than ours. That's what I've been trying to tell you. <laughs> He's good, isn't he? All right, Lily White. All right, Jeff Lars. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, Morecambe and Wise are running wild. Just 
gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the show. Live from the famous Shepherd's Bush Empire. Oh, yes! And we hope you enjoy our special guests, Ray Buckingham and Miss Alma Cogan. The first, our first guests of the evening, four in accord. So far, so good, Sadie. They remember the words. Mm. Big chickens on now. I mean, sorry, K-pops. <laughs> What brings you to our humble village of Vestaria? We're from BBC Television. Yes, Eurovision. Eurovision? Eurovision yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You did well locked up in that case for three hours. You can pat yourself on the back. The way I was twisted up, I could kiss myself on the back. Next time you can travel in it. The doctor calls it a complex. Magistrate calls it six months. Well, where do we go from here? We've got to get some money somehow. We haven't even got our bus fare. I'll tell you what, let's get a taxi. Alma Corgan can hold a tune, can't she? Oh, yes. Still, uh, lovely set, though, isn't it? Nice, clear picture. It will be followed by the latest film of events and happenings at home and abroad. Well, that's the first one under our belts. Mm. You gotta feel sorry for the lads. Perhaps nerves got the better of them. They were nervous before they went on stage. They never came out with rubbish like that. Look, Sadie, I know you're upset. Upset? I'm bloody furious. They should be ashamed of themselves, the pair of them. Timing. Out. Crosstalk. Out. Material. They're not bad material when they see it. They've done enough of it over the years. And they look like two frightened camels. Camels? You know what I mean. Really, my cup of tea. I must have made it. Give me a chance to warm up. There's five more shows to go, yeah. <laughs> You are sure about this? We're dying on national television every week. We don't have any choice. What's this? It's a check. We thought it was fair. We're not doing the rest of the series. We're giving you your money back. Well, this is the first. It is indeed. I've never seen the inside of Ernie's wallet before either. Now bugger off and go and work on the rest of your series. I've got Dickie Henderson waiting for me. You're both first-rate TV material. Now go and prove it!
How do you feel? Like an oyster at low tide? Well, at least this is the last one, eh? We should have said to Nigel, we can't tell the difference between southern humour and not funny. Should have said, should have said, should have said, but you didn't say, did you? Not at the time. What? Did you back me up when I was trying to get the scripts changed? No. Did you come up with any ideas? No, you just sat at home with a cob on waiting for me to sort it out. Hey, come on, come on. We don't want to be falling out. When this is done, we'll go straight into Panto and forget all about it. There is no Panto, Eric. Don't be daft. Sheffield Hippodrome, babes, in the wood with Hugo Garrido. They've pulled the booking. They've gone with Mike and Bernie. What? Since when? Nobody told me. Nobody told you because you can never be bothered to phone our agent. It's always down to me, like everything else. Bernie. Bernie. What are you thinking? How's your own thinking anything? Your lips were moving. I'm just thinking... Go easy on, lad. All right. George? Mm? When all's said and done, I am his mother. Mm. outside the house. I think we're going to have to move. Come through, Joan. I told you time and time again to trust your own material. I've drummed it into you. And what do you do the moment my back's turned? You forget everything. Hi, Mum. Do you mind? This is my hiding place. Can I borrow your bike? Where are you planning on going? Anyway, they don't have televisions. You try borrowing furnace. <laughs> <laughs> You'll soon be back. People will forget. They won't forget this. Here. Read that. Definition of a TV. The box that buried Morecambe and Wise in last night. You read it? I did. And you know what I think? There's nothing harder to find than yesterday's paper. The daft thing is, I didn't even want to be a performer in the first place. Don't come that one. I should have stayed here. I should have worked for the gas board like you. I'd have been just as happy. Well, you wouldn't. It's a dead-end job. You're not cut out for a dead-end job. Nobody is, not really. You are? Mr Happy-go-lucky, everyone says so. Oh, everyone says so. Well... It must be true, then. Shouldn't you at least call him? Let him call me. 
That isn't going to happen, is it? Eric never calls you. Exactly. How long are you going to keep this up, then? What? This sulking malarkey. Used to sulk when I made you wear that schoolboy outfit. Right up until when it got you a big laugh. Television isn't about dressing up as a schoolboy and singing, you know. Well, it certainly isn't about being funny. Not if what I saw you two do was anything to go by. Don't go easy on me just because we're related, will you? I don't know how to soft pedal. It's not in my nature. You don't have to tell me that. I'm hard on you because you and Ernie are better than that. I saw you on that television show, doing that tripe. Biggest break, your chance. You forgot everything. You and Ernie know what's funny. You know what plays funny. You know what tells funny. You must have known deep down that material was not funny. What do you want me to say? Because that by telling me I'm right. I'm sorry if you feel we've let you down. Get over it. Who are you? I don't have much choice, do I? Like you always said, it's what I'm best at. You know what you need, don't you? What are you doing? Finding them new material. I get ready to drive me down to Ernest tomorrow. Bash their heads together. No, Sadie. What do you mean, no? Push, push, push is what I do. That's what our Eric needs. Well, maybe it's time you stop pushing. You saying I pushed him into it? Nobody's saying that, Sadie. You were right to push him. And I'm glad you did. But what I'm saying is. He's got to do the pushing now. He's got to go down to Ernie. He's got to do it for himself. He's got to want to do it himself. Well, begging me. You don't put your foot down for 25 years of married life when you finally do, you're wrong. <sighs>
when did the rest of the Beverly sisters arrive? Just keeping me eye in. Well, you'll need it. We've got a booking. I rang our agent. Well, wonders will never cease. Where'd you get his number, Director Inquiries? <laughs> Is he in? You know he is. Is it cold in here? No, just me. <laughs> Director inquiry is very good, that. I should write that down. Use that for your solo slot. Well, that makes you think I'm going solo. You were practicing a solo dance routine. It was like Jiminy Cricket on a hot plate. I've had interest. I'm not surprised in those trousers. So who are you playing then? Grumpy or sneezy? Come on, Ernie, it's Hardwick Hippodrome, not to be sniffed at. It's fourth on the bill, Eric. We've not been fourth on the bill for ten years. I'm not doing it. Well, I can't do it on me own. Why not? I haven't got me lollipop for a start. Well, that's where it went. I'm not all there. There's something missing. Shall I tell you what really bothers me? Apart from your small change. All double acts start out as mates. And they stop being mates, but they carry on being a double act. Well, I'm not having that. I'd rather lose the act than be best mate. Do you mean my mum? Oh, very funny. What if we make the act fun again? What if we change the act? What if we put more of ourselves out there? What have we been doing for the past 13 years? We've been a double act, but we've never been us. That's what we should do. Nobody's got what we've got. And I tell you what, if it doesn't work out, we call it a day and no hard feelings. So this new act, what would it be? How would it start? You'll be short and bad-tempered. Mm and I'll be tall and lazy. But we'll both be idiots. Fourth on the bill, eh? That's the magic of television. So, what went wrong with Teleshow then, lads? Scripts, cast, music, director, lighting. <laughs> Apart from that, it were great, eh? <laughs> Good luck, boys. Not, Not now, Arthur. Arthur. Welcome to the show. Excuse me. What? I'm Eric Morecambe's mother. I'm afraid I can't let you in without a ticket. I need a ticket. I'm his mother. How do I know that? Did you see their television show? I think I'd own up to that if it wasn't true. But have we got a show for you tonight? Have we got a show for them tonight? <laughs> I'm going to give them my all. <laughs> no notice. <laughs> I've had a tiny inkling lately. So I've heard. <laughs> Ever since we're engaged to that contortionist. <laughs> well, she broke it off. I'm not surprised. <laughs> what went wrong? She didn't take to my little foibles. Well, it takes some getting used to. <laughs> I got married, you know. I didn't know you were married. Oh, it's one of those quiet weddings. Quiet weddings? I didn't go. <laughs> well, where did you meet her? Who? Your wife. Oh, the wife. I thought you meant her. <laughs> not her. I've never met her. I met her now. Hello, Mum. You all right? Uh, Oh, the wife! Yes! Met her at a dance. She was the prettiest thing on the ballroom floor. I can see her now, lying there. <laughs> Tell me about the day you got engaged. Ah! I bought her an engagement ring. It had five stones. Not diamonds, just stones. Five big bricks. She walked about all on one side. Forgot what she looked like. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, I just remembered. <laughs> My goodness, sir. You don't look well. He's emaciated. Has he? Pretty bad for your eyesight, is that? <laughs> I 
I'll tell you what. There's going to be trouble when they open the coffin and find him gone. Let's just get on with it, shall we? The ladies and gentlemen don't want to hear this rubbish. Don't they? Didn't they read the poster before they bought the ticket? They're here for high-class entertainment. All right, we better go then. Uh, let's... Let's just get on with it. Can I do the song first, though? Yes. Strike it up, fellas. When did you learn how to play? I know it was today, but what time today? <laughs> well, why don't you try rehearsing it on your own? Ern, that's a very good idea. That's why I've I like seen it. enough, thank you. <laughs> you see a pair of laughing eyes. Now start wiggling. Seven. But I've never wiggled in front of anybody in my life. Well, it's time you made a start. Go on, get a hold of yourself. <laughs> I'll, I'll smash your face in. I used to be a boxer, you know. Were you any good? Well, put it this way. I spent so much time on the canvas, they put handles on my trunks. They used to sell advertising space on the soles of my feet. <laughs> what do you think of it so far? Positive thinking, that's what I told the man, said, don't wear a frown, try positive thinking, laugh at your troubles instead, you've got to look on the bright side, on hope so much depends, with your confidence sinking, positive thinking, helps you on the way, my friend. Thanks for waiting. When things look black, try Positive thinking, treat every season of spring. No glancing back, try. Positive thinking, trust what tomorrow may bring. This crazy world that we live in will keep on spinning round. But with good, strong, positive thinking, we'll get together and life won't let I could sing like that, don't you? Yeah. <laughs>